your home for high school football. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 and WOBMAM.com. And the empty chair is for our colleague Matt Harmon, who has tonight off. Matt on special assignment uh, and won't be with us tomorrow night when we broadcast Jackson and Toms of the North. Chris Barnes, the former uh, Jackson and Wall coach, comes in the booth with me, and it will be down on the field at Gurnard Field tomorrow night. Uh, thank uh, L.J. Clark and Amir Tyler from Lakewood for making the trip down here and uh, uh, heading on home. Uh, good conversation with Coach Anthony Petruzzi and, of course, our Bob Batters. Uh, but uh, uh, this next guy, it's, it's amazing. You know, they started the season. Everyone ranked them number one. Uh, they've won four games uh, by scoring a total of 174 points and giving up 35. Uh, and we spend really little time each week talking about Middletown South. We kind of feel like it's just business as usual. Coach Steve Antonucci is going to be good enough to come down and spend some time with us next week and bring one of his players. But kind of just wanted to touch base with uh, Nooch and uh, uh, check in on the Eagles, uh, who are uh, flying pretty high. And, Steve, I appreciate you giving us a few minutes uh, uh, tonight. And clearly you have to be pleased at the, the results of your first four games. Uh, first off, Kevin, Ed, thanks, thanks always for having us on and uh, for you know giving me the opportunity to to represent our program. But I always appreciate it. But uh, no, we feel good. We feel good where we are, and uh, we have a great group of kids, and we're hoping that uh, the sky's the limit. You know, you have achieved so much success uh, in 18 seasons, uh, championships, a, r- a ridiculous one-loss record. Uh, sometimes it's probably taken for granted, but I know you've been disappointed at the way your seasons have ended the last few years. You've gotten to state sectional finals, uh, come up just short last year against Jackson, and I wonder how much that has been the building block for this year, uh, especially for this group of upperclassmen. If this is the year that they kind of feel like there's some unfinished business left to take care of uh no doubt i mean you know the, the goal of this program you know since day one since i got there was to to win championships and that's never changed and we've never wavered on that and you know we continue to work at that every single day you know, whether it's with this group or you know groups that will come in afterwards as long as i'm there that's always going to be you know the high point and uh i think that's you know the emphasis of where we're at but, but this group has definitely taken uh, you know, itself to another level and taking that step to try to get to that point where we can get over that hump, get that monkey off our back, the gorilla, whatever you want to call it. But we're certainly ready to take that and hopefully get us deep into December, you know, and get us into the opportunity to win that game. Coach, uh, you know, last year uh, your quarterback, Matt Mascara, first team all short kicker. But as a quarterback, he plays pretty well. He threw for over 1,000 yards last year. You seem to be more allowing him to throw the ball this year. He's already got eight touchdowns. He's only thrown one pick. How much more comfortable are you with him at the quarterback? We're extremely comfortable, and I think Matt has earned that. Uh, you know, playing the 12 games last year, uh, I thought he limited himself. You know, and maybe it was just him trying to grasp what we were doing offensively, but he has a total grasp of what we're doing. Uh, I said it after game one. He is taking a leadership role with this group, and, uh, we're we're fully excited with what we're seeing from him. He, he's giving us another dimension to our offense that we didn't have last year, both with his arm and his leg, uh, you know, and with his legs. I mean, this is something that you know we were hoping we would get to step in our offense, and he's become a legitimate threat. You know, not just throwing the football, but running the football, and, and obviously what he does for us, special teams. You know, so many talented players on this 2015 version, you know. Uh, let's talk about your running back situation. You know, you throw McCarthy in there, uh, Rodgers in there. Rodgers been banged up a little bit, so uh, not as many carries as maybe you hoped. You know what, it's, it's, we were talking about it today. Uh, I think he has 13 to 16 carries, whatever he's got. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he didn't carry the much. He didn't carry the ball much in game one. He cramped up, didn't play the second half. Okay. I think he got 140 something yards and three touchdowns, and that was in the first half against Neptune. So uh, he's got to be raring to go. We're raring to see him go. It was nice to get him back in practice this week. It's such a different dynamic with him and, and James. I mean, James is just a, he's a bulldozer. He's your throwback high school football guy, linebacker, running back. Where Cole is that slasher, man. It's just he his vision is uh, you know I and I say this you, you know wholeheartedly. He sees what No Sean saw. You know, he doesn't have the thing that No Sean has, okay? But the vision is there. You know, it's something that you can't teach a kid. And he makes some cuts in practice in games that you just go, holy cow. 
Boy, that's uh, that, that's about as Pretty high a comp- that's about <laughs> as high a compliment as you can play uh, comparing anyone in any regard to uh, uh, No. Sean Marino. Uh, your game this week, uh, you have Howell uh, coming up uh, this weekend uh, at your place tomorrow night. Uh, what 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 can you tell us about the Rebels and you know what what's what's the the, the feeling going into tomorrow night? What do you need to do to be success- successful? Uh, you know, we just need to go out and play our game, you know, and do what we've been doing. Uh, this is a very, you know, as we mentioned, this is a very good group of kids. They're very focused. Uh, you know, our practices are, you know, we're, we're trying to some degree to tone our guys back a little bit in practice. We, Cole got hurt in practice. I mean, you know, that's what our practices have been like. So, uh, you know, from that standpoint, we're, we're just trying to get our kids to do what they do best. They enjoy playing the game, which makes it fun for all of us. Uh, they're excited about every opportunity. And with every opportunity that we get from week to week, I mean, we're working to get to that goal. And, uh, you know, that goal is still out there for us. And right now we're trying to hopefully get ourselves in a situation where we can have a, you know, a say in our conference and then eventually have a say in where we're going to play our playoff games and then eventually get back to, that, to the ultimate game. My uh, final question, Steve, uh, and, I, and I'm so happy, by the way, that next week you'll be in and we could really get into it next week down here at Water Street. But... You've been switched from Central 4, where you're pretty familiar with some of the teams that you might play, to North Jersey Section 2, Group 4. Like yeah. it? Don't yeah. like it? Uh, you know what? I, I, I've never – you know, I'm not one to complain. Uh, you know, you send us someplace we're going to go play. So, uh, you know, does it take away some of the familiarity? Yes. I mean, there's some unhappy guys on our staff who are traveling up north every weekend now trying to scout games. But <laughs> – I mean, other than that, I mean, you know, I, I, like I said, we're going to show up. We're going to play. I don't care who you are, what colors you're wearing. We're, you know, we're we're going to play the game, and, and we're going to do what we have to do to win the game. So, uh, I do like the challenge of a Phillipsburg. We've never seen anybody like that before. You've got Summit in there. You've got Mid North, who's off to a great start and done some great things with Coach Bush. Uh, you know, Sarahville's back in the mix. So there's there's definitely some teams there that uh, you know that intrigue you in terms of going into that bracket. So I don't feel like. We're in a bracket that uh, is weak by any means, okay? But I certainly, you know, uh, would have been a lot more familiar, obviously, with the Jacksons and the Bricks and everybody else uh, from that standpoint. Yeah, you know, you left out one team there. The only other team undefeated in that section so far is Woodbridge, who yeah, did yeah. have some, co- you know, played Colts Neck in the shore, gave you a little indication of uh, what kind of team they have. They're pretty good up there in Central Jersey. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, I did see that game actually. So, uh, you know, we will, uh, you know, somewhere down the road possibly run into them as well. You know, it, it is a nice graphic. I mean, it's not anything to, you know, to shy away from. Honestly, I mean, uh, you know, like you said, Woodbridge is the quality team, and, and those other teams that I mentioned are certainly quality. And Phillipsburg is a three-time champion up there. So, yeah. uh, you know, we got to work. Up. Steve Antonucci, the head football coach at Middletown South in his 18th season. Coach, we're going to save the A material till next week. <laughs> we did mostly B stuff, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a little fun with you next week, and uh, we'll look forward to doing that. In the meantime, I uh, do appreciate you jumping on for a few minutes. Good luck this weekend against Howell, and we'll catch up with you next Thursday. Thanks, guys. Always appreciate the time. All right. Dinner's on us at Water Street. Steve Antonucci, Ed, the guy... The guy's record is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a hundred and sixty-two and thirty-seven. Yeah, he's been in the sectional finals, I think, eleven times in the last fourteen years. I mean, just ridiculous numbers. So I think we take everything for granted there. I have a feeling this team is going to go down as one of his best. I really do. I felt that way from last year. We saw them against Jackson in the state final. We saw the players coming back. Uh, the McCarthy kid, who I really like, is just a throwback, you know, fullback, middle linebacker. You know, he's got so many talented seniors on this team. We should take a, a fan poll to see and, you know, who could guess who he's going to bring with them next week. He can only bring one player. Actually, we should do that. We should, we should tell <laughs> him to give us five. We'll put him up there and we'll let people vote on it on who, <laughs> who gets to do that. But listen – it's his program. You know, he's yeah. going to determine. He's you, gonna... you know, the scenario could be set up, which all coaches dread, of Middletown South and Middletown North playing two games, either back-to-back or two of the out of three weeks. And because they play them at the end. Thanksgiving. Right. And 
they are in the same section, and right now Middletown North is 3-1, and one, so you got to believe they have a good shot of making it into the top eight. And the other thing is, if Middletown North continues to find success, that game could be for the division title. Exactly. Outright division right. title, the, the Class North. A North, yep. you know. So, uh, interesting scenario. That game has not had championship ramifications for quite a while. And Steve Bush has done a very good job in a short time at Middletown North. And it's North. always a tough game oh, for Middletown South. Absolutely. Always tough. Absolutely. Uh, we'll take a, uh, a break. Uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll get ready to catch up with our friend from Monmouth University, Kevin Callahan, whose Hawks coming off a nice win last weekend. We'll do that after this. You're listening to the Thursday Night High School Football Show on the Shore Sports Network. Water Street Bar and Grill in downtown Tom's River is the ultimate sports bar. With 32 HDTVs, Water Street brings you all the action of every football game. Located right on the water, Water Street is the perfect place to enjoy the finest views of the shore. Whether you want to grab a few drinks with friends, catch your favorite game, eat a delicious meal, or enjoy live entertainment every Friday and Saturday nights, Water Street is the place for a good time. Located across from Huddy Park on Robbins Parkway in downtown Tom's River. Visit them at bakerswaterstreet.com. Pain is something nobody should have to live with, and Thompson Healthcare and Sports Medicine uses a wide variety of techniques and services to alleviate and eliminate your pain and find out what's causing it. With a team of chiropractors headed up by Dr. Robert Thompson, their goal is to find the best treatment program for you. Whether it's chiropractic care, sports rehab, spinal decompression, medical pain management, or acupuncture, they are also certified active relief techniques providers. Thompson Healthcare and Sports Medicine is dedicated to making your life painless. They have offices in Lacey and Tom's River and coming soon to Manahawkin. For more, visit njchirosport.com. Finding the right college is all about finding the right fit. Visit Georgian Court University for their next open house, Saturday, November 21st at 10 a.m. GCU was recently ranked number 25 on Money Magazine's top 50 schools that add the most value. Learn why when you visit Georgian Court, Central and South Jersey's only Catholic university. Sign up to tour the campus at georgian.edu slash visit. That's georgian.edu slash visit. For the latest high school football news, visit shoresportsnetwork.com. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310, and WOBMAM.com. Nice little crowd here on a Thursday night. A beautiful night. Well, I tell you what, unseasonably warm tonight. We're at the Water Street Grill in downtown Tom's River. They've got the baseball and the football on. Great place all weekend long to catch your uh, favorite action, man. There's TVs everywhere, and, you know, we, uh, we, we're very fond of the people here. They're great hosts. And um, we're also fond of Coach Kevin Callahan. His Mammoth Hawks got a nice win last week on Saturday in the, uh, in the wind and uh, uh, a little bit of wet stuff, a 31-24 over Bryant. And uh, he's good enough to, uh, uh, as always, spend a little Thursday night time with us. And, Coach, well, I'll tell you what, there were some anxious moments at the end of that one, but it had to feel good to walk off the turf, turf with a W. Well, it certainly did, and you know we want to keep it interesting for those brave fans that came out and supported us throughout the game. Uh, it was a, with the forecast what it was. Uh, we didn't know how many people would show up, and the ones who were there. We wanted to make sure we entertained them. Well, you sure did. I mean, it went down. Bryant went deep into your own territory uh, in in the final plays. I'm sure you didn't mind the entertaining part. Probably would have preferred a little more security the last couple of minutes, though. Well, there's no question about that. I mean, we kind of, you know, that last drive that they had, but it started with just a little over a minute left. Uh, they kind of gained some yardage, too much yardage too quickly and got it down to the five-yard line there. And, you know, even then, even down to the last play, um, it wasn't over and, and, until that ball was ruled incomplete out of the back of the end zone. But, you know, I will say this. I was happy with the way our guys – uh, you know, fought through the adverse conditions. The wind was, was really difficult on the field. Not as yep. much the rain, but the wind was very difficult. And I thought we showed some resiliency. You know, after that, we looked like we jumped out to a fast start and were in control of the game, and Bryant comes back and puts themselves back in it and ends up, we go up 24-16, and they come right back and tie it really in two plays. 
Um, you know, I thought our guys did a great job of maintaining their poise, focusing on what they had to do, and then we go down and get, you know, the, the what resulted in the winning score. So I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, to me, that, that demonstrates growth of our young football team. It, it demonstrates the fact that they're, 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 it's, it's coming along for them now. Ed, I just want to ask one other question about last week, uh, and that was the game-winning touchdown, the uh, the wide receiver screen, uh, Cody Williams to Reggie White Jr. I mean, is that a case of a play that just went just as you draw it up on the old blackboard, as they say? Well, it did, and, and Reggie, you know, he picked up uh, two great blocks, one yes. from our center, Alex Thompson, and the other from our tight end, Hakeem Vallis. Made terrific blocks on the play this spring. I mean, we had said going into the game that we were going to have to be able to run the ball to win, and we did that. We, we won at the line of scrimmage. We ran for over 200 yards. And we said our receivers were going to have to make some plays in the pass game, and that's exactly what you saw. And it was good to see Reggie White break out a little bit and make the type of plays that we, as a coaching staff, know he's capable of making. And for that, he was recognized as the uh, Big South uh, Rookie of the Week. Coach, uh, one of the things you harp upon uh, your team, especially, and to us each week, is to get out of the blocks quickly. Well, you certainly did this week. I, I had the pleasure of watching the first half. And, by the way, thanks for talking to the guys upstairs and not letting it rain. I was certainly wet enough Friday <laughs> night. Uh, but then the, uh, the guy next to me here sent me to a high school game to cover. Uh, so I missed the second half uh, and, uh, and then didn't realize that I couldn't listen to it on the radio as I was traveling to Tom's River East to see a football game. But – one of the things you always harp upon is to get out early and two quick touchdowns to get you in a good frame of mind. Well, I, I thought that, you know, our offense came out and, and really executed the game plan. We were going into the wind in the yes. first quarter, and, and we made up our mind in, during pregame that it, it wasn't a wind that was going to stop us from throwing. It, it may affect your deep balls a little bit, but the, the quick hitters, the, the, the short passing game, we thought would be effective, and, and that's exactly what we did. We started with the coming in, we came out throwing. That opened up some things in the run game for us, and very happy with the way our offense went down the field in those first two possessions, converted a number of third downs, converted some fourth downs on those drives. And to go up 14 nothing in a day where it looked like the weather was going to continue to deteriorate was huge. All right, well, now we, we move over because conference play begins this weekend. The Big South schedule, you get into the grinder, having gone 2-3 and three in the non-conference, and uh, uh, you start uh, this Saturday at Charleston Southern at 12 noon, they're off to a one and three start. Uh, three and one. I'm sorry, three and one start, uh, and obviously a formidable Big South opponent. Give us the skinny on them a little bit. Well, you know they're they're a team that you know has been very successful the last two years, winning nine games and ranked in the top 25 at the end of last season, just barely missing the playoffs. Had a great win over Liberty uh, at the end of last season. And, you know, they're a team that likes to run the ball. They're an option football team, a two-back option team, and they will run the option every possible way you can imagine. They run lead option, trap option, zone option, G option, belly option, whatever it is, they run it, and they're very effective at it. But what, what's hidden in there is the way that they can throw the ball. Uh, they throw the ball extremely well for an option team. Uh, it comes as play action off their option game, but it, it is very well thought out, and it – really uh, challenges you if you try to put an extra safety in the box against them. And then on the defensive side, you know, they're a team that's extremely athletic, extremely quick. Not the biggest that we'll play this year, but they really all run very, very well. And it's a fairly veteran group, particularly at the linebacker position. They score a lot of points, Coach, huh? In their three they wins, do. 41, 47, and 33. Well, the only game they haven't scored a lot was to an FBS opponent in Troy State. Uh, the other games they get on the scoreboard, and the other thing that they do is they eat up clock. Their time of possession was the top a year ago. It was the top in FCS football. This year they're averaging about 33 minutes time of possession per game, which is, which is huge. And what that does is it, not only do they keep the ball, but it limits – the opponent's offensive opportunities, and we have to make sure to find a way to make sure that we get off the field on defense. Uh, I would be remiss. Uh, we've heard so much about the weather problems and the flooding problems. Uh, you're heading down to North Charleston, South Carolina. Is that any concern for you at all? 
Well, no, we've we've spoken to the people down in Charleston, and while there are some parts of Charleston that are, you know, ha- have had some flood damage, where the university is, the airport, and the, and the route in between, and including the hotel, is, is wide open and it's dry and it's very clean. You know, I guess as you move northwest of Charleston, more into that upstate region, going toward Columbia and Greenville and those areas, you know, that's the area that was hardest hit by the flooding. But they say everything is fine there. Uh, the game will go off uh, as planned. They did. They they were out of school on Monday and Tuesday of this week, and I I think that was more uh, due to the fact that people couldn't get into the college to work. Not exactly the conditions on the, at the college. Yeah, because I know the University of South Carolina had their game with LSU. Actually moved to Baton Rouge, so I guess where that is is a worse area than where you're heading. It is, and, and as I said, that's more in that what they call the upstate or the Midland region of uh, South Carolina. Um, in Charleston, or the greater Charleston area, for the most part, is pretty good shape. Although we did think about the possibility of having a home game, and you know, we actually even floated that idea by the people down at Charleston Southern, but they weren't having any of it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a tough one to win. <laughs> hey, uh, their top running back, Mike Holloway, coach, uh, you know, looks like he's the top running back, uh, uh, 210 yards. He missed the first two games. Injury or what, what was Yeah, he there? was out with injuries the okay. first two games, um, an injury that was sustained during a uh, training camp. And okay. he actually, Darius Hammond was the number one guy going into the season and even in preseason in the write-ups. And then all of a sudden, Holloway's come on the scene in the last uh, two games and has done a great job. As you guys know, they're averaging over 270 yards a game rushing, and it's really a combination of both those backs, and, and they are in the game at the same time. Uh, that's another thing that challenges you on defense because you you really you can't key in on one guy in particular because they're both very dynamic backs, and they both have an equal opportunity to get the ball on every play. This is a noon kickoff on Saturday. You can hear the game on 1160 and 1310 a.m. And, of course, streaming at Shore Sports Network, Matt Harmon and Eddie Acapinti uh, on the call. Uh, Coach, uh, I hope it's a good trip down there. I know this is a very formidable opponent. Uh, uh, so uh, we'll just wish you the best of luck and look forward to chatting with you next week. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much, and and we're looking forward to this trip. We're looking forward to starting conference play. All right, thanks. There he goes, Coach Kevin Callahan. Not easy, the next three. Uh, It's a grinder now, yeah. Charleston Southern, Liberty, and Coastal Carolina. That's why I thought it was so important for them to get that win last week, uh, get get a little momentum there. Uh, We are just about out of time. a uh, reminder that tomorrow night, Ed, the Jersey Mike's game of the week, we'll be at Tom's of the North as the Mariners host Jackson Memorial in what is a big Class A South contest. Our thanks, of course, always to the great people here at the Water Street Grill and Tom's River to Tom Tremblay, who does a phenomenal job here for us, and Zach Collins back at the studios of the Shore Sports Network. Thanks to all our guests tonight. And for my colleague, Ed Sarluka, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, you will. I'm Kevin Williams. You have a good rest of the evening. You have been listening to the Thursday Night High School Football Show on the Shore Sports Network. All right, guys. I'll Thank talk you, to you Zach. tomorrow Great night. Great job as always.